So today I'm going to read to you the end of chapter 30, which is where we were up to with our fabulous class novel, George's Secret Key to the Universe. So we just got to the point where they'd rescued Eric from the black hole. Let's continue from that point. This, Eric said, Susan, is Graham Reaper's house. Graham wrote you that note to send you into outer space. And while you were there, you stole Cosmos, thinking this would mean you could never come back. No, Eric gasped. Graham did it deliberately. He stole Cosmos. I told you he'd never forgive you. Oh, dear, said Eric, sadly, struggling to pull off his space boot. That is very unhappy news. Um, Eric, piped up George. What did happen with you and Greeper? I mean, why did he want you to be eaten by a black hole? And why won't he ever forgive you? Oh, George, said Eric, shaking off the space boot. It's a long story. You know that Graham and I used to work together. He reached into the inside pocket of his jacket for his wallet. From it, he took out a crumpled old photo and handed it to George. In the picture, George saw two young men. Standing in between them was an older man with a long white beard. Both the young men were wearing black gowns with white fur-lined hoods and all three were laughing at the camera. The man on the right had thick dark hair and heavy framed glasses, which even then were sitting at a slightly strange angle. But that's you, said George, pointing at the photo. He examined the face of the other young man. It was strangely familiar. And that looks like Greeper. But he looks really nice and friendly. Not scary and weird like he is now. Graham, said Eric quietly, was my best friend. He stu we studied physics together at the university. The one here in this town. The man you see in the middle was our tutor, a brilliant cosmologist. He invented the concept of cosmos and Graham and I worked together on the early prototypes. We wanted a machine that would help us to explore outer space so that we could extend our knowledge of the universe. At the beginning, Graham and I got along very well together, Eric continued, gazing into the distance. But after a while, he became strange and cold. I started to realise he wanted Cosmos all for himself. He didn't want to go on a quest for knowledge to benefit humanity. He wanted to use Cosmos to make himself rich and powerful by exploiting the wonders of space for his own good. You have to understand, he added, that in those days, Cosmos was very different. Back then, he was a gigantic computer, so big, he took up a whole basement. And yet he wasn't even half as powerful as, as he is now. Anyway, one evening, when Graham thought he was alone, I caught him. He was trying to use Cosmos for his own terrible ends. I was there and I tried to stop him and it was dreadful. Everything had to change after that. Eric fell silent. What, after the terrible thing happened? asked Annie. Susan nodded. Yes, love, she said. Don't ask your father any more questions about it. That's enough for now. And that's the end of the chapter. Well, my head is buzzing with questions, actually. I wonder what will happen the next time we read when we read chapter 31.